Good morning, church, and welcome to First United Methodist Church of Pittsburgh. I'm Pastor Tracy Cox, and it is my privilege and a blessing that we are able to worship together this morning. I pray that you would uh, take your seat and take a deep breath and open your heart and open your mind and become aware of where we are, not in the sanctuary, but in our own sanctuaries of our homes. I pray that you would be able to connect with one another in the chat room that's going on alongside worship. And I pray that you would be able to engage with one another in worship. But above all, I pray that Almighty God touches your heart and fills your heart with grace and with love and with hope and with goodness. It is so good that we're able to worship together. In likeness with the creator and lover of life, who yearns for the flourishing of all, we are unsettled. Upset. Grief-stricken. Incensed. The preciousness of life is treated with contempt. Daily, we weep over evil's reign. For every sibling, kin, and stranger, neglected or exploited. God, let your righteous fury Move us to respond. Come and find the quiet center In the crowded life we lead Find the Good morning, I'm Joe Smith. I'm the Director of Spiritual Formation here at First Church. Welcome to Family Time. We'll start with our prayer of gratitude. Lord, thank you for all that we are given, especially the love in the hearts of many. For sun, moon, stars, and sky. For family, friends, and fun. And most of all, for the opportunity to help others. Amen. One of our Bible readings for today is Psalm 23. And this, uh, the Psalms are the Bible's book of prayers and poems. And Psalm 23 
is one of the most well-known and most well-loved poems and prayers in the Bible. I wanted to talk to you about this psalm today because if you've been watching Miss Becky and Miss Helen's godly play videos online, you'll know that they've been talking a lot about sheep and shepherds and different animals and the way that farm animals have been used to help lots of people around the world improve their economic situation. And this psalm that is so well known and so well loved is about sheep and shepherds. It's really about how God is like a shepherd to us. It's such a beautiful psalm that I wonder if you would read it along with me. You can maybe find your Bible and find Psalm 23. The Psalms are right in the middle of the Bible uh, in what we call the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible. So Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He lets me rest in grassy meadows and leads me to quiet waters. Now, why do you think a shepherd would lead a sheep to quiet waters? Well, the sheep needs water to drink, right? But also, sheep are really afraid. So if the shepherd brought the sheep to a rushing river, the sheep would hear the sound of the river and see how strong it is, and they would get really scared and they wouldn't drink. But God is like a shepherd who doesn't just care about taking care of your needs, but also cares about your feelings, cares about when you're afraid or sad or upset or excited or happy. He restores my soul. He guides me in proper paths for the sake of his good name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no danger because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they protect me. You set a table before me right in front of my enemies. What do you think is an enemy to a sheep? It would be a lion or a wolf or a coyote, right? And this poem says that God is like a shepherd who sets a table for the sheep. Sheep like to eat grass. Right in front of the lion or the wolf. And that the sheep feel calm and feel at ease to bend their heads down and eat the grass because they know that their shepherd will protect them no matter what dangers there are. You bathe my head in oil. My cup is so full that it spills over. Yes, goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the Lord's house as long as I live. You know, our world is sometimes like a sheep's world. There are lots of things around us that can be really scary and lots of things that can be really dangerous. And sometimes when we look around, it feels like we're walking through the darkest of valleys. But what this psalm reminds us is that God walks through the valleys with us. That God is there to protect us from danger and to keep us safe and to care about what we're feeling and what we're seeing and what we're hearing. So I hope that you know that God is with you just like a shepherd is with their sheep, right where you are. Shalom, Ani, Ani,
Shalom Ani Ani Shalom Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. This is one of the Bible verses that has written on my heart since my youth. And every time I read it, I wonder how am I supposed to always rejoice? I mean, think about everything that is happening in our world today. At the same time, we have football and baseball, and we had hockey, and we had basketball. There's back to school, but only for a few days. No, now it's, now it's every day of the week, but it might go back to something else next week. There's, there's protests that are going on to, to stand up for the, to the wrong that racial injustice is, and Black Lives Matters has been um, standing strong with this effort. 
Or what about when you, do, when you cough and, and you're a little congested, you wonder and you fear, do I have COVID? Is this it? Is it do I have COVID now? There's political harassment going on all around us. There's, there's church. Can we meet? Can we not meet? There's, there's work. There's not being able to go to work. There's working from home. There's, there's loss. There's grief. It is overwhelming, isn't it? But we hear, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Well, that is much easier said than done, wouldn't you say? I mean, now just might be the perfect time for us, this eight months into COVID, uh, this might be the perfect time for us to take a deep breath or pause or perhaps even put on a full stop. But this may be the time that we need a reset, a reset button in our, in our world right now. And how are we in this chaotic world, how are we able, with our overwhelmingness of everything that is, to hear from a letter that's in the Bible that was perhaps written by Paul, perhaps some of it was written by Paul, perhaps none of it was written by Paul, to the people of Philippi? What could this letter possibly say to us that's going to guide us, that's going to comfort us, to encourage us to be a community that lives by love and grace today? How? How do letters written long ago help us to find joy and peace in our lives today? You know, and sometimes... Even among those verses that are written upon my heart, when I am given some scriptures in the Bible, I feel like I am reading a laundry list of things to do. Think about this just from the Philippians text. Well, you know, be of the same mind in the Lord. Help each other out. Rejoice always. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. Don't, don't forget, the Lord is near. Let your requests be be made known to God and give thanks. One of the words that really reached out to me in that list of things to do is gentleness. I believe our COVID world needs great, powerful gentleness right now. Whether it be a conversation about masks, whether it be a conversation with your neighbor about the yard signs that you have up, whether it be about voting, mail-in or personal walk-in vote, or whether it be about something more dynamic like injustices in the world. The gentleness, the power of the gentleness, we need to let that be known to everyone. That gentleness is in how we treat people. That gentleness is how we treat others when we are slighted by them. Our gentleness is shown when we reach out to others, to those who are hurting, and we don't ask how you're hurting. We just reach out and try to give them some gentleness. But that, that powerful word of gentleness is also about hospitality. It is about welcome. It is about inclusion. Because when we are givers of gentleness, in every situation, we, that allows us to share in the joy of the nearness of God that is ever-present. But you know, then in the, in, the, in the scriptures, we're told not to worry. Yeah, like that's going to happen. Like I'm not going to worry about things. And just the mere fact that I'm saying that I'm not going to worry about things makes me worry and stress out even more. And whatever joy I may have found in the gentleness of the power that came before is lost because I'm stressed. So this is where I like the comma. If you were to look into the Bible, it says, do not worry about anything, comma, it's not quite finished yet. It's not a quite a complete thought. But by, ask, by, by prayer, with supplication, with thanksgiving, let God know what you need. 
the ever-present God wants to hear what you need. So sometimes we talk to God. Sometimes we, we question God. Sometimes we wait in silence for that still, small voice of God. And when we pray, as it says in the scriptures, we, we are not told that we're given a specific answer to our prayer request or our need. No matter how noble the need, it is not promised that it will be answered in the way we want. But we are promised. We are promised the peace of God. Not, not the peace that is made up in human minds or defined by our human imaginations, but the peace that mysteriously, wonderfully surpasses all understanding. That peace, that peace will guard our hearts from being overwhelmed and will allow the reality that there is a reality that is real and right before us that we are not alone in this universe, that God is with us. There is a reality that we have to, to purpose and, and to care that God gives and, and to creation, all of creation, recreating constantly, and that rests upon our hearts. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice, and it's that always that is the tricky word, because how do we always rejoice, especially in 2020? And so the final word that we hear from the letter today is, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is pure, pleasing, commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. Dwell on these things. Fill your heart with these things. And when you can't do it yourself, rely on someone else to encourage you to think on these things. And when someone sees you not able to dwell and rest and breathe in these things, they will come to you so that together we build community. When we are present with one another, there is great joy. When we are with one another. And you know the amazing thing about this COVID that this pandemic that has swept over our globe and around our nation, it has enabled us to find new and exciting ways to be present with each other. So think on this, dwell on this, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, pure, pleasing, commendable, if there's anything excellent, if there is anything worthy of praise, even in COVID, think on these things. Think and live on these things as we press on, as we move forward, as we take the next steps. We cannot do it alone. It will not happen in isolation. Life will take all of us together, showing gentleness and having the confidence in our prayers so that we may rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Amen and amen. When halls of power try to turn our gaze away from suffering and neglect, how are we to respond? In this community, we choose to pay attention. We will not hide from trouble or silence suffering that surrounds. God has woven our lives together. With renewed commitment to solidarity, let us share our gifts and offerings. Holy 
holy agitator, blessed defender of life, you teach us how to practice courage in the hardest situations, when we would rather remain silent or go with the flow or stay off the radar of our enemies. You remind us of the sacred calling of love that will not let us take shelter in privilege or apathy. For your disruptive and saving truths, we bring our gifts with thanks. Amen. Receive the benediction. Courageous ones, God sends us with the audacity of Christ. Before thrones of injustice and in the quiet of our own hearts, the Spirit enables us to be brave for our own integrity, for our neighbor's well-being, for the sake of the collective flourishing, with peace that passes all understanding. Let us go and live our faith. Amen and amen. Hi, Tim. <laughs> okay.